Losing streak is over for the Florida Panthers as they dominate the Ottawa Senators from the Canadian Tire Center and really from the start for, for the Panthers as six different players get on the score sheet and special teams shows up big. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Friday, April 5th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We're to your team every day. Thank you for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Rowan Double S from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Monoman12. Follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. You can follow the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. So Florida Panther fans, how are you feeling? Uh, because it's it's crazy because after Paul Maurice told us all to relax, you know, obviously there's going to be a section of the fan base who's not going to relax. Sometimes I'm not going to tell people how to fan, but sometimes, hey, some out there go big game by game by emotions as far as that in regard to the result. And sometimes you just need a feel good win for the Panthers. And, and this certainly was a feel good win for them as it was a full 60 minute effort after the Panthers got on the board a minute and two seconds in, they, they had the foot on the gas pedal the whole time, but it is a Friday, which means it is a Fairbanks Friday edition of the lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Nick Fairbanks is back to recap this six, nothing win for the cats. Nick, Welcome back to the show, and we and, uh, and on a victorious Fairbanks Friday, my friend. It's been a while since we've had one of those, and um, I have to say, it's glad to see the team actually look like they know how to play and know how to win and uh, take advantage of uh, an Ottawa team that just can't figure it out. Yeah, and and when when you think about everything on on the night as as in, in regards to the panthers i mean you think about where florida where it really came down to was their ability to close gaps prevent prevent the passing which even when the ottawa senators got the puck back you had they they were they were overthinking as far as like when the panthers were in their face and having to force them to their backhand even on dumps where where the panthers i mean one of the best uh, one of the best at 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 board battles and even when they're not the team dumping the puck too and and really the, for the panthers when it really came, came down to it, it it was about protecting sergey bobrovsky especially on the penalty kill where the panthers went to the box four times in the first period uh too when it comes to that and i mean thankfully the panthers were out able to get on 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 the score sheet early nick nick cousins uh nick cousins gets on the board and so does dimitri kulikov which but also must feel good for Dmitry Kulikov after a a poor last few games gets on the score sheet. But also credit to that third line too for battling uh, battling out on 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 the boards and being quicker to pucks and getting the puck low to high too, and and just having the uh, the Senators uh, on as a turnstile really in their own zone a lot. None of the none of the goals were off the rush, not not forcing the rush too, and it just came down to really the the four check too for the Panthers. So I think the word that we're looking for is work ethic. If I mm -hmm. can say that's two words, um, something that's been missing for, uh, you know, we can say about 10 games, but tonight reminded me a lot of what the team was last year. Take a dumb amount of penalties, but still find a way to win a game. Um, now, you know, you have, you know, Nick Cousins, you know, everybody's favorite player in the NHL right now, uh, scoring early into the game, making a statement. And I made this comment uh, on Twitter a few days ago that the only thing that went right in the Montreal game was that Nick Cousins 
turn back to himself, like he turned back into himself at mm-hmm. the towards the end of the game. Maybe this is something. Maybe he is the reason why Florida is able to turn things around and really just start putting effort into, you know, what they're trying to do and getting right for the playoffs. But, you know, as you said, you know, Florida was just ferocious on uh, all the passing lanes. I think they said that they had a a record of uh, how many block passes they had through two periods or something. I've never heard of yeah, I've never heard of a stat like that before, but it just goes to show you that if Florida wants to play how they want to play, they can, and they mm-hmm. they haven't forgotten. So uh, just really happy to see that, you know, they're able to turn it up and, you know, show everybody who they really are. Yeah, I got back to their uh, identity. That was Nick Cousins' first goal uh, in 12 games. When Kulikov's goal, that was his first goal of the season, his first goal as in a Panthers uniform since mid December of 2015. So also, also, also that for the Panthers and then how quickly uh, the, the Panthers really got out in the, in the second period too. I mean, that, I mean, ridiculous angle from Anton Lindell uh, as he was playing give and go with Etulus Duran and, and all, mm-hmm. and just opening up that, 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 that awkward shooting lane. I mean, Corpus Allo, a little confused um, and then leaves that little gap for, for Anton Lindell to thread the needle, your boy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's starting to get it. You know, I think he's starting to understand where his game is going to go. And I think it's been coming for the last, I, I would say a couple of weeks. He hasn't been always rewarded, but he scored against Montreal, that beautiful um, uh, forehand backhand forehand goal to get the scoring started last night. And then tonight just ripping it off of Corpus Allo's mask. He's done that like, I think twice now this season. So um, maybe something to look forward to, but just notice that he hasn't had to sacrifice defense to do that. And I think they're trying to find something with him, Luz Ryan and, and Rodriguez, which I think going into the playoffs um, might suit them well, but don't be surprised if we see Paul Maurice pull the lines back to where they were possibly last year um, mm-hmm. with, with Reinhardt coming down there to kind of solidify the top nine. But um, you know, back to Kulikov, you know, he hadn't had a goal as a Panther for like almost eight, almost nine years now to say that he had some, you know, some not so good games or rough games. The last two games is putting it lightly. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't think Domino's or even pizza hut could deliver the pizzas as well as he did, uh, the last two games, unfortunately. So glad to see that he, uh, con- contributed the way he did tonight and he was aggressive on the defensive side. So, um, Hopefully he's figured it out and understanding that he doesn't have to overplay too much and that he just needs to play his game. Yeah. And, and, and credit to credit to Dmitry Kulikov as well, getting, uh, uh, getting a uh, multiple blocks on the night. I believe, hold on. Let me, let me double check uh, his, his blocks on the night. One, one, uh, one block on the night, uh, but still re- very responsible in his own zone. I mean, Josh Mahara uh, filling in for Ekblad. He had four blocks on the night. Nico Mikola four hits too. So, just uh, and also, the the penalty trouble for the Panthers. I mean, came really off a off a high stick that wasn't called on Oliver Ekman Larson. You see, um, you see, yeah, Ryan Lomberg going to the box too, and then Oliver Ekman Larson going after uh, Parker Kelly later on in that period. So really, <laughs> those those could have been prevented if there was an early call too. But the Panthers still managed through it too. And also, Sam Bennett quietly has a three game goal streak. The reason why it's gone so under the radar is because the last two goals that he scored were in garbage time too. So also credit to him as far as trailing the play, Matthew Kachuk finding and his presence on the ice, just when it comes to defenders that he could just easily drop that puck too for Sam Bennett getting uh, now, now getting his third uh, on the, on in, in the last three games and then 53 for Reinhardt, just again, discom- <laughs> discombobulated in the zone uh, for, for Ottawa after, after, so um, after the the puck pinballing too, uh, so also the Sam's getting on the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and is Sam Bennett scoring the quietest twenty goals you've heard? I mean, almost twenty, but yeah, yeah. I think he's at eighteen or nineteen now, 19. and he's only played sixty four games. Um, so he's been injured. He's he's one of those players that you wish was healthy a little bit more, just because he does mean something to the top six, but he, he's starting to round out. He's starting to put the presence on. Um, I don't think he was as physical as he could have been the last couple of games, especially against Toronto, but that wasn't the type of game they were trying to play. And 
if he gets going, Tuchuk's going to get going. Tuchuk had another three point night. I mean, mm-hmm. one game second, he comes back, puts up three points. And then, yeah, you have Barkoff and Reinhardt back and forth, just whipping that puck around back to each other. And, you know, Reinhardt puts it in off a of Stoops' skate and uh, just goes under the leg, I believe, or just over the leg of um, uh, Forsberg, who gave Panthers fits uh, a little bit earlier in the season. So um, just really glad to see that the whole team kind of contributed today and really, you know, put it on to themselves like, hey, to show like, hey, this is who we are. We never lost the way. And, you know, let's take it to Ottawa, who, you know, we've shut out before, but, you know, let's really show it again and uh, ensure that they know who the dominant dog in the division is besides Boston. Yep. And and uh, and plenty of uh, Boston talk to talk about late, later in, in the show. But uh, even one more thing is, Bottom third in five on five scoring, and five of your six are on are at five on five uh, for for the Panthers, and they break their power play goal drought during their two seven and one stretch. They were the worst power play unit in 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 that since uh, March fourteenth. So also great to see that the Panthers got back on on it, in a tally there. But we're going to transition over to segment number two, where we're going to discuss more about our. Three stars of the game and the moment when we thought this game was won or lost. We're going to discuss that and more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Robin Hood. And did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good for, through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Invol- investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401k. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date and the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube and the free Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Back on this Friday, April 5th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Friday where the Florida Panthers defeat the Ottawa Senators by a final score of six to nothing in Ottawa and outscored the Senators 11 to nothing total in both of their road games there. Sergey Bobrovsky goes 30 for 30. Maybe you can write a documentary on that, uh, you you know, somewhere along those lines with that stat line. But Paul Maurice also gets win number 865, passing former Panthers assistant coach Lindy Ruff it, it, for all-time coaching wins, too. So, Nick, uh, th- so when it when it comes to the three stars of the game for the Panthers here, uh, put very simply, you got to give the guy who has a shutout uh, as the fr- as the first star in Sergei Bobrovsky, at least uh, at least for me. So he he is my first star. My second star for the for the Florida Panthers is Matthew Kachuk. Three point night for him, getting a goal on the power play, just right there on the on the doorstep. Just the 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 uh, the Senators forgetting about him as like you said, Reinhardt and Barkov just zipping the puck back and forth. It was a whole night of just easily zipping the puck through that zone. Man, did the Panthers make that look easy? And honestly, number three, I'm gonna. Uh, a guy with two assists on the night, Etu Lusterainen. That third line for the Panthers was really great as far as just being quicker and and get and like and like I said earlier, uh, get getting the puck back back to an open open man, back to the blue line, 
and 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 allowing the Panthers to 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 work it around, even though the Panthers in the first 20 minutes did not have have the the zone time due to them going to the box, which we'll get a, a little bit later in this segment as the, the part where I thought this game was won or lost. But those are my three. And shout out to that third line, seven to one. They outshot at five on five for their opposition. The the best uh, differential on on the night, even though credit to the second line too. They got out shot. Um, they got outshot seven to four and still outshot outscored their opposition too. So credit to them too, uh, as far as intercepting passes in the neutral zone, generating speed uh, too. So credit credit to them. Uh, your stars of the night, um, Nick. Can't go wrong with Bob as your first star. He, uh, I think he made some saves tonight that really not only elevated not only himself, but I think it gave the defense some confidence. And I don't think he was really ever in a huge amount of danger, but there were some high danger chances in the first period that really mm-hmm. kept Florida uh, with the momentum. Second star is going to be Matthew Tuchuk. Um, You could just tell the presence, as you said, of him being on the ice again, especially in Ottawa against his brother. Uh, it just brings out something extra, and he was able to help drive the second line tonight. Um, Bennett wouldn't have had his goal unless Tuchuk just laid it right there for him and drew those defenders to him. And then the third star, I'm going to have to go with Nick Cousins. Mm-hmm. I personally think his goal um, to start off the game is what just lit the fire with everybody. I don't think anybody expected him to score. Uh, he doesn't really have the best shot, but um, if you ask the Maple Leafs fans, it's pretty good. It's all right. Um, but I think him, uh, scoring the first goal. And then I think he assisted on the Lundell goal and everything. It just, he's putting in the body of work. He's getting into the board battles. He's grinding and he's just showing what exactly a playoff player is supposed to look like and what they're supposed to do. So, uh, I'm going to give the third star to Mr. Cousins. Uh, Cousins got the secondary assist on the Lundell goal All right. uh, on, on that one. So yes, two assists on, on that one. And, um, also, with how imp- even though um, even though Brandon Montour did not get a a point on the night, that first goal by 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 the Panthers doesn't happen if Brandon Montour is not down low at, on the on the entry where Ottawa has all their eyes on them, so they lose track of Cousins instead of him being the <laughs> defender back. He he creeps up into the middle, and that's where the feed happens for that open opportunity too. So and. Brandon Montour had a, a couple of good chances that a, a good chance off the post. And then Matthew Kachuk, him and Bennett had a few rushes where um, Kachuk also lost his edge there. That maybe could have been another uh, score there. So as far as driving play, uh, just that, that second line just found a way as far as like continuous continuing to, to grind too. Uh, as far as when we thought this game was won or lost spoke about the penalties, which in 11 minutes of, PK time, the Panthers only gave up six shots on goal. It, incredible with how mm-hmm. the gap, the closing the gaps, for, forcing to the outside, getting the clears, very, very clean as far as as far as getting their personnel on the ice and and just ro- rolling, rolling their guys out there, even rolling their guys at five on five and getting their necessary changes, getting the pucks in deep too. Uh, but my moment was towards the end of the first period. The Panthers were already up. They were already up 2 nothing, But there was an opportunity for the Panthers to go a minute and 35 seconds on the kill to start the period. And Anton Lindell draws a penalty. Uh, on, <laughs> I, I believe it was on Ridley Gregg uh, towards the end. Yep, Ridley Gregg had a high stick on, on Lundell just before the teams went to the locker room. And think about the strategy and the conversation of the locker room, what, it, what that is when, when you're starting the period four on four versus versus uh versus down a man and just how it could just take the air out of the locker room and the panthers even though they didn't score on their abbreviated power play they they scored shortly after that was the the lundell sharp angle shot too so so that was my moment where i thought when i thought this game was won for the panthers so i wanted i'm not going to keep harping on the cousin goal but i really do think that was the biggest spark but After, you know, kind of what you were able to say as far as like him drawing the penalty and going into the second period, four and four, and then having an abbreviated power play, um, I think the fact that Lundell was able to shoot that off of, um, what's the goalie's name again? I'm sorry, I'm blanking right now. Jonas Corpusalo. Yeah, Corpusalo. 
the fact that he was able to punch that in off of his uh, mask and everything and it falls in, I thought that was the end of the game there just because if you would have looked at any of the other games for the past 10, Florida was not getting those bounces. They weren't getting any of those chances and everything. So to me, it just felt like, okay, we're finally getting back to it. You know, shots are dropping. We're getting lucky bounces and everything. I think this one's okay. This one's in the bag. Yeah, and you think about you think about because of the fact that they, um, after that they weren't spending too much time in their in their own end. You don't no. have that opportunity where, where the Panthers were having their feet still too. So that's another contributing factor as far as that the, the Panthers were able to dictate that as far as the the pace, and 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 also that's that's really helpful when it when it comes to when it comes to ability to just quickly exit too. You're not. You're, the the puck's not coming out of your stick uh, when when mm-hmm. you're trying to when you're trying to just get it out quickly. Play a good north south game too, and and and, and all wh- when it comes to that. So that that is a big con- big contributing factor when when it when it comes to that too. So a uh, great great moment for you as far as uh, pointing out when we thought the game was won or, or lost and, and all. And once once again, six for six on the power uh, on the penalty kill just. Night and day from still the the amount of pan, penalties that the Panthers take, but still uh, their ability to just relax, kill it off, and then create momentum off of that and got back to their identity. But we're going to transition over to segment number three, where we're going to discuss more of the playoff picture. Now, as things are starting to clear, the Panthers losing skid is over. Now it's time to put a little bit of a different perspective as things are coming down to the wire with five games left in the regular season. We're going to discuss that and more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has you has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car into the MVP and bring home that dub. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into this Friday, April 5th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Fairbanks Friday edition of the show where the Florida Panthers are coming off a six to nothing dismantle of the (laughs) Ottawa Senators at the Canadian Tire Center to win the season series with one matchup left on Tuesday night from Amrit Bank Arena. Also, uh, Paul Maurice, after the game, spoke about how he's very thankful to just be behind the bench and also the the adjustments that ha- he's had to make over his career from the time he entered the league in Hartford, of uh, the move, uh, even even a short stint in Toronto, coming going back to Carolina even, too. And, you know, just great to see how he has been able to adjust mentally to the game and how this – and with the speed – now of where it is now at 865 wins in order to get to second of all all second all time which is 105 away passing uh coach q it would probably be two or three more seasons uh, as mm-hmm. far as that record scotty bowman is going to be a hard very very hard record uh <laughs> to, to get to as he's like 400 away <laughs> so <laughs> gonna be a hard one but you never know but uh also he said that steven lorenz had went through some intermittent vomiting uh throughout the the game and projectile pro, yeah projectile vom- <laughs> vomiting so so with uh so with all that and the minutes um that were just dis- you were able to distribute it now with the big lead thankfully the panthers were 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 still able to still roll very easily uh when when it came to just getting getting this game over with too 
So now with the playoff picture for for the Eastern Conference, whoa, is it more jam packed than ever, Nick? With the New York Islanders winning, the Pittsburgh Penguins winning on on the night over the Washington Capitals, and now the Tampa Bay Lightning winning both ends of their back to back tonight in Montreal, seven to four. Now things are even more interesting. But here's a little perspective, Nick. Even though the Boston Bruins won, yeah, if you win, you would still need Boston to lose one more in regulation for you to control your destiny. So now think about it. Second in the division is more than likely. At least the chances are. But the way I see it is the Panthers have four more games until game number 82. The Maple Leafs have five games before game 82 this can still happen the panthers can win just one game and the leafs can lose just one game prior to all that and the panthers can still be in a position in game number 82 where if they get a regulation win they clinch home ice in round one so a little perspective there for for what is coming down the stretch and in simpler terms and as i posted in my tweet the chances of the Panthers now losing home ice for round one is kind of unlikely when you look at the schedule ahead, even if they lose to Boston because you, you see Ottawa once again on your on your schedule, uh, Buffalo, Columbus, uh, who's out of the playoff picture. Yeah, these are teams with a lot of pride to play for, but they're still th- – this is why a win like tonight was important too, to now set up everything prior to game 82, which – still has an opportunity for that game to be meaningless if things get taken care of. How, how, are you, how are you viewing this now for the Panthers? Because I've, I've kind of accepted the fact that it's likely going to be the Leafs, even though the Lightning have creeped in a little bit to them. Lightning certainly have, and I think about a week ago we were thinking that it probably wasn't going to happen. Um, but now that you know Tampa's played 76 games, Toronto's now played 75 games, and they're two points just apart. Um, it it's a game in hand. That... Toronto, Toronto has a game in hand on Tampa. So, hmm, okay, yeah, yeah, they do, they do. Um, so I think what it boils down to me is that I really wish Florida would have won the Toronto game. No um, doubt. Um, I think that would have solidified it completely. Um, we would have been at 103 points. Toronto would be at 93. But then. Then you have to start thinking about, well, they'd be tied with Tampa Bay right now for 93 points. So maybe it was good that Toronto won Mm -hmm. and they put themselves two points ahead with a game in hand. But to me, it doesn't matter who you're going to play. I am the firm believer that eventually Florida is going to have to play Tampa. And in order to win the cup, they're going to have to slay that dragon. So whether it's going to be the first round, possibly the second round, yeah, all right. Uh, sorry, if you guys are watching the video, a little uh, thumbs up emoji came up. <laughs> um, we've been going crazy with that. Um, but I just think whether it's first round or second round, Florida's going to have to exercise their demons and mm-hmm. really do what they need to do. Um, not saying they're going to do it, but if they do, then I think their chances are pretty high um but as you look at the wild card you have one two three four i'm gonna say four teams that are all within a point or two for the last wild card spot none of them are really exciting me right now as far as winning i mean pittsburgh's won three straight um detroit finally won one and washington has lost four in a row so it makes you wonder who has the, I don't know, who, who, who has the uh, medal or who has the guts enough to finish out this season to get it? Who's going to be last year's Florida? It would, be, it would be something to see if it was Pittsburgh, considering what happened to them last season. It's, it's crazy because everyone, everyone is mostly going to be playing each other uh, too mm-hmm. in, in all this because – Carolina gets uh, Boston one more time. Boston will face both Pittsburgh and Washington to come down this season. 80, game 82 will be them at home against Ottawa. So, uh, But you, you think about 
do you think about Pittsburgh too? We mentioned game 82 with Washington and, and, uh, and the Philadelphia Flyers uh, there. And that could be for number three, but also for the Pittsburgh Penguins, as far as the double header for Saturday, the first part of that double header will be Penguins lightning. They also get, they also get Detroit, a team they're chasing. Uh, they, they will also be on the road in game 82 for them against New York Islanders too. So with everyone running into each other for the Islanders with all the loser points that they, uh, that, that all, all the loser points that they have and the lack of regulation wins, they're going to have mm-hmm. to, they're, they're honestly the, the team that I expect the least to make it. They're going to have to win outright. There's going to, there's going to have to be a tiebreaker. Uh, there, there, it's going to come down to a tiebreaker for the teams ahead of them. For the Islanders, they have to win outright for them. So they are at the biggest disadvantage here. And, and as far as for the Panthers, they already have nine more. They already have eight more regulation wins than the Leafs. So they don't have to work. They don't have, they don't have for the Leafs. They would have to win outright over the Panthers too. So that's the great thing about where the, as far as the, as going back in going back to the Panthers, even before the, the, the run of getting to overtime and even getting some loser points didn't really come until prior to the all-star break in that back-to-back in Pittsburgh and New York prior to the break too. So it just goes to show how great that start was for the Panthers and seeing all these teams too, the fact that they're all playing each other, they're going to, they're going to earn it. Whoever gets that last spot, it's going to be well-earned too. And I wouldn't want to play them because they'll be coming in feeling good about themselves, feeling that they earned a playoff spot and who knows. And, you know, looking at the standings uh, this season, sorry, I was looking at last season because I want to see how many points Pittsburgh missed by. And oops, it was one. Um, yeah, Boston's going to be playing the most likely the – or no, uh, New York right now is going to be playing the Islanders at, if it were to end today. And Boston would be playing Tampa, which would be very interesting. But just so many storylines, so many – good games you know i think honestly hockey is going to probably be at its best in the next two weeks just Mm -hmm. how the season's going to end but you know as you alluded to florida all they have to do is just take care of their own business they did earlier in the season when everybody had them counted out that they weren't going to do anything without ekblad and montour that they were just going to try and tread water just you know take care of what you can stay healthy don't try to do too much or don't overextend yourself because the, the big prize is coming and you need to do everything possible to make sure that you're ready and that you have everybody ready to go. So, um, yeah, just take care of business and let everything else work itself out. And that is why Paul Reese told everyone to relax because it's a new season. When we say zero and zero to start, you can throw everything you could throw everything out of the window when it comes to season series and, and, and all that, and just focus at the game at hand one period at a time, one shift at a time. That's old cliches there, but that's really how you, how you win in the Stanley cup playoffs, just going little by little of which uh, w- one more thing before we uh, get out of here is that Aaron Eckblad will, will be out for the rest of the regular season expected Smart. to be back for the playoffs. So hopefully when him and Carver Hagee. Carver Hagee could still uh, play in the final parts of the regular season. He actually skated this morning. So uh, we'll, we'll see then how quickly they could readjust uh, to the Panthers. But knowing knowing how long they've played in the system, I'm not. that's something I am not too worried about personally. But, Nick, I want to thank you so much once again for joining me on this edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. A, a dub for the Panthers and a feel-good <laughs> one right before they head into their Saturday matinee nationally televised matchup against the Boston Bruins, which could, uh, which has some big implications. So tell everybody where they can follow you online. Everybody, you guys can follow me on X or Twitter at Prudentia Zero. And just remember, the season has a bunch of waves, peaks, and valleys. This was a slump. Everything's going to be okay. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. Mm-hmm. Armando, thank you for having me again. Absolutely, my friend. See you, see you next week as we, we recap the Blue Jackets game at home. See you then. And if you like what you're hearing, 
Please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steer Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Nick Fairbanks. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.